Hello everyone, welcome back to Skybyte Studios, and in this video we're going to be doing an unboxing and review of Transformers Studio Series number 62, Deluxe Class Soundwave. And as always with these reviews, please stay tuned to the end as I will be showing both transformations and both modes. Now with all of that aside, let's take a look at the box of the figure. And here is what Soundwave's packaging looks like. And as expected, he's in the usual Studio Series box with a primarily black and red color scheme. On the back you get the product images as well as some of the information on the character and figure. And something interesting to me is this figure supposedly transforms in just 10 steps, hinting at the simplicity of the transformation. But anyways, let's get into the unboxing. And before we get into the figure itself, here is just a quick look at the backdrop that comes with the figure in outer space. Alright, and here we have Studio Series Soundwave opened up and in his satellite mode. And as you guys may have seen with the unboxing, it was a little confusing with how this figure was packaged because normally these figures are tied down to that plastic tray. This figure did not have any ties other than the one that was on that uh, display stand, which is weird. But I checked the packaging itself, there was no holes meant for any uh, any of the zip ties, so this is not a return figure in any way. But there you go, this is what the figure looks like. It's pretty simple looking alternate mode. Uh, everyone could pretty much assume how the basic transformation is going to go, and this I already seen some reviews of this figure, and it's gotten kind of a negative reputation. Uh, I'm gonna try to give it a chance. Uh, it looks decent. We're gonna be comparing it with the original 2009 figure later on, but it's a primarily gray color scheme, mostly unpainted plastic. You have the occasional silver painted parts, as you can see on some of those kind of satellite pieces on those pauldrons, such as the ones at the top that have that trans uh, that transparent blue uh, plastic on it, and you can see it right there, primarily in the front. And you got a little bit of that blue running a little bit on the front of the figure and his red uh, painted visor. In terms of features in this mode, there's not much to it other than that display stand, which we'll remove right now and take a quick look at. We'll take a look at the molded details here, which is there is a quite a good amount. You can see the details on that arm section and then on the base here. There's a little bit of articulation here, that top section can swivel 45 degrees either side and at the base it can swivel and in case you're wondering, yes, it can attach to other Studio Series figures. Here he is attached to Studio Series Revenge of the Fallen Megatron, as long as there's a peg at the bottom of the figure's pelvis pretty much, it can be used as a display stand as you guys can see and Optimus Prime also has that display stand as you can tell right here, so you could create some pretty dynamic poses with other Studio Series figures. Now going into the size comparisons, here is what this mode looks like next to the original Studio Series Soundwave from Dark of the Moon. Here is the mode next to Revenge of the Fallen Voyager Class Optimus Prime. And finally, this is what he looks like next to his original 2009 counterpart.
All right, and here is Studio Series Soundwave transformed and in his robot mode. And as you can see, it's a pretty clean robot mode in terms of kibble because there is no kibble to be put on him. It's pretty much the same pieces used to transform him into his alternate mode, which kind of reminds me of Revenge of the Fallen Ravage, if you remember that. It was just his, uh, pretty much his cat mode transformed into a, itself to kind of look like a missile. That's kind of the situation here with this satellite mode. So you get a pretty clean profile from pretty much any angle. But the color scheme here is pretty much the same. There's, from what I could see, no added uh, pieces of paint or areas of paint. It's that same basic gray plastic throughout with the occasional silver pieces on those arms and the legs. And you get on that kind of skirt section in the back. And someone, uh, someone said uh, that the front chest piece looks like the front of a TIE fighter and now I can't unsee that which is pretty funny but there you go this is what the robot mode looks like looks pretty okay on a shelf but like I said nothing much to him other than he looks pretty okay going into the articulation of the figure uh, there's a decent amount the heads on a ball joint so it could turn all the way around it could look up pretty far and you could get a little bit of that sideways motion on the head the arm could go pretty much to a full T pose and you could swivel at that upper bicep or that shoulder section and the elbows could bend at a little bit over 90 degrees. If you wanted to, you could have that wrist articulation used for transformation. And then going down, you get a little bit of a swivel there at the waist, but it is pegged in. And then going into the legs, the outward movement is almost non-existent. You don't have much outward movement there on the legs. And you do have a uh, upper thigh swivel there, as you can see. And then moving on with the legs, you can see that they've moved forward about that far. And then they move uh, backwards this far. So there's a pretty good range of motion going forwards and backwards. And then you have a bend there at the knee, as you can see. There's no real ankle articulation, but there is one right here next to the calf, which is pretty weird. So... You could use that to help him stand if you need to. Moving on to the size comparisons, here he is next to the first Studio Series Soundwave from Dark of the Moon. Here he is next to Voyager Class Optimus Prime from the Studio Series line. Next on the Studio Series figures, here he is next to Revenge of the Fallen Megatron. Next up, we have Revenge of the Fallen Starscream. Here he is next to Soundwave from the Siege line of figures. And finally, here he is next to his 2009 counterpart. And here we have Soundwave transformed back into his satellite mode. And pretty much both transformations are really, really easy. Uh, it follows through to that 10 steps. I don't know if it's exactly 10 steps like the box says, but it's a very simple transformation. You can pretty much guess where everything is going to go. But there he is. My overall thoughts on this figure is 
Uh, it's not by any means a priority. If you want this figure, go ahead and get it, but I wouldn't highly recommend it at all. Mainly because what you're really paying for is that display stand. If you need that display stand for other Studio Series figures, then go for it. You're going to probably uh, pay $20 for a display stand if it's cheaper for you that way. But yeah, a lot of the downside on this figure revolves around the ingenuity, how simple it is, and the paint scheme. If they, I, My mentality is if they're going to go simple with the ingenuity here, might as well make up for it with the paint, but they did not even do that, so that's pretty unfortunate here. Like I said, the best part of probably about this figure is the robot mode and the fact that he comes with that clear display stand that he, you could that you can use with other figures. But anyways, that's pretty much it for this review. If you guys have any questions about this figure, go ahead and leave a comment down below. Hopefully I'll see it. If I don't, hopefully someone else will be able to help you guys out. And as always, please hit that like button down below and subscribe for future videos from Skybyte Studios on YouTube. Thanks for watching. See you guys later.